Hey, it's Richard again with Matthews Wealth Management diving into the M2 uh, and balance sheet for Federal Reserve because we don't like the Fed. But uh, yeah, hopefully this mic's still working. I've got to step over stuff. We've got lights this time, so hopefully it looks better. But let's jump in and see what's up in the world of M2 money supply. So everybody remembers this graph. Cool. Oh, wait, what's that? Huh. Very odd. We are at uh, 20 trillion. $889 billion, $500 million uh, floating around the economy, and that variable makes life difficult for economics. But here we are on a zoom in of COVID, right? January 2020, and we see all this stimulus and unemployment and PPP and infrastructure and just spend money to make money or something, because obviously the government has a positive rate of return. Uh, tongue in cheek. So remember this, this was last month, we saw the first uptick of M2 money supply since November, which, you know, they're supposed to be selling off bonds. And that's a, that's a thing, right? Like that's going to be detrimental. No, it actually has an impact on the bond market because they're flooding the market with excess bonds. And everybody's like, ah, I can't buy anymore because the Fed's the buyer of bonds, right? Of treasuries. So if they're selling, wow, it makes prices really difficult. But now, M2 is going up for two consecutive months. And if you remember for June, that was the first month, July here, the second month, I wonder why money supply is growing. Why are they printing more money? Hmm, what did we do in June? Uh, Congress debt ceiling. Uh, here we are at the 20 trillion, 889 billion, 500. We went up again, right? So only a quarter percent, right? That's not that bad. That's 3% a year, right? And so if that's our normal expectation of inflation, then fine, but uh, why does it need to go up at all? Get back to me, somebody. Somebody with a reasonable reason. <laughs> There's no such thing. But uh, year to date, hey, and by the way, I've got these double question marks for the one month and the year to date because guess what? Those numbers changed. They, they changed again. Like, why are we revising these numbers? How can we not know and it be constant? Because this happened in the month of June where they went back and reset the pre-COVID number, right? Because it was 15.4 before and they lowered it, which actually makes these numbers look worse. But why are they revising this? Like, doesn't make sense to me. So we revised what it was a month ago. Go back and watch June. It was not this number. <laughs> this number has changed again. And then January of this year, it changed. Why did it change? But uh, anyway, it shows that what, what's happening is that we are destroying currency. This number has been dropping every month. If you haven't been seeing these on a year to date, it should be continuing to decrease except these last two months, which are dropping that number. And then on the one year, 3.56, that's good ish, right? Because this is what inflation is. Like if people say, what is inflation? It's literally the amount of money out there. That's the only thing that's changing. Um, demand is the same. You still need toilet paper. You still need food. You still need gas. The world hasn't changed what its uh, productive capabilities are. In fact, if anything, that's the other way. And so why do you print money in a <laughs> lower productivity? Whatever. I'm um, talking to nobody. But uh, back to January, it's now 13.396 trillion, which means that we have still increased the amount of money floating around by 35.68%, which means prices on average will increase by 35.68% from that date. Go look at the grocery store. It's pretty obvious how all this stuff works. All right, let's dive into the next piece of this. This is the balance sheet. This is what the Fed has bought up during the crisis because nobody else can be trusted on a default except the Fed because they'll print money. Did that really do anything for risk? No, whatever. Um, 2008 crisis bailout tarp. Well, apparently we couldn't allow things to, this was decent, right? Like that was actually a decent trajectory. And then uh, we, we started, we actually started before COVID, right? Like, that's the thing that's so interesting is, why did we start before? But I don't know, there was a bank bailout, guys, from this. But nobody remembers, who cares? This was a good enough reason to just print six and a half trillion. And uh, so when they print it, it's, they don't just print it and throw it into the market, right? Like, so the way it works is that the treasury has to issue bonds because the government doesn't bring in enough taxes uh, because they spend too much. And so when they have to spend and they issue these bonds, nobody's going to buy that debt because it's garbage, right? We just got downgraded, by the way. But uh, when that happens, the Fed says, we'll buy that 
debt that nobody wants and uh, we'll hold it on this balance sheet. And so that's where all this comes from until November. And they started selling. And then we had, you know, uh, oh, Silvergate and uh, Silicon Valley Bank and, you know, all these banks had these crises and they're still being used. People are still going to that BTFP um, uh, bank window, basically, and borrowing to bring their bond portfolios back to par. And so, but meanwhile, they're parking other assets, getting paid at the reverse repo window. Who cares? Blah, blah, blah. Nerd stuff, but it does matter. So now people are paying that back off and they're selling it. Great. Okay, good job, Fed. Fed's doing okay here. It's just the fact that they have to do what Congress says. And that's, that's the whole thing about being independent. Yeah, right. All right, back to COVID. All that garbage. And it has continued a downward trajectory. So I am happy to report that. And over the last month, we've dropped from 8.3-ish down to 8.2-ish. So that's uh, 1%. Keep it up, man. That's 12% a year. That's decent. I am not going to complain about that. You'll see the problem, though. Uh, it's Congress. It's not the Fed right now. So year-to-date, uh, down 3.5. Look at this. In the last year, we sold off 7.55% of the balance sheet. I never would have thought that would happen because I feel like this is just gonna run its course and go forever until it all breaks. I don't think that anybody is serious about trying to correct the problems um, in the financial system um, or balance a budget, you know? Like, it seems to be that as long as our debt is bought by the Fed, that that's good enough. I don't understand that. It's just counterfeiting money at this point. But since January, 2020, which was left over from the, uh, the real estate bailouts, our bank bailouts for real estate. Now we're having the bailouts of just giving people money. And uh, so that's, it's still up 96%, but hey, we've been over 100% for quite a long time. So we're under, I'm happy to see that. All right, let's look at the actual raw numbers. Uh, I skipped, yeah, that was it. Okay, the, the, this is the punchline, I guess. So balance sheet, they've done a good job. They've sold off 90 billion um, in bonds which helped those long-term bonds on the asset performance drop. FYI, that's a big pressure point right now in the bond market. Is this selling? This will eventually reverse. This will eventually stop. Um, they'll either let it mature and not renew, but they've got plenty more to renew because M2 is still going up, right? By 47.8 billion for the month of Ju uh, July. So how does M2 go up when you've already sold off that? Well, you had to have extra spending and uh, thanks Congress with your debt or deficit suspension. Uh, you can just keep on spending and nobody cares because it's an election year. I don't know, you know, like everybody, whatever. This is just ridiculous. So add this 140 to last month's 220. That is on pace to spend deficit spend money. We don't have another 2.5 trillion dollars. I know that doesn't sound like much to you anymore because who cares about million, billion, billion, trillion, but each one of those is a thousand more fold, not a thousand plus, a thousand times. So it's a million millions, one trillion. So 2.5 trillion in one year, if this continues, obviously it's going till uh, January or something of next year, but that's 300 and what is it? 370, is that right? roughly 350, we'll just round it, $350 billion over two months. And who cares? <laughs> so what does this mean? This drives equity values. This drives asset values. This drives expense values, right? So, so this is a big problem. This is good in the sense of trying to correct it, but not when this happens. So, so the net effect is still inflationary but this is putting pressure on bonds. So stay tuned for the next video after we get done with, video, uh, with meetings and we're gonna do the reallocation finally. And uh, I'll share more about kind of what that looks like. But um, that is it for the market update for the month of July. I'm gonna do another video, assuming that this mic is still working and uh, cross my fingers when it comes time to edit. So anyway, stay tuned. We'll see you in September talking about August.